I'm Vince. I shoot coffee and I drink film. Wait. In this video, I'll be shooting a couple of film stocks on their Yashica Electro 35 GTN. So, pause the video, go grab a coffee or a tea or any drink or just don't drink, and roll the titles! breath because I've just gone up the steps into the woods and I'm going to be testing out some Lomochrome Metropolis. Probably going to shoot because of the light at 400 ISO. Usually this film is intended for urban built up areas but I thought, fuck it. Let's think outside the box. Ooh. Let's see what this film comes up with in a wooded area. So a quick rundown of the camera. It's a rangefinder film camera that takes 35 millimeter film. It has a 45 millimeter fixed lens, an aperture of 1.7, which is mm, amazing. The shutter speed is determined automatically by the camera, dependent on the ISO that you've set and the aperture that you set. The issue you have, um, because of the shutter speed only going up to 500th of a second, is that you're going to have to be stopping down that aperture in order for you not to get blown out shots, obviously depending on the film that you've got in there. The only indications that this camera gives as you begin to press the shutter down, you'll get one of two one of two lights come up either slow or over so basically it's just telling you that you're either under or overexposing and then you just adjust the aperture in order for no lights to show up which means that you're correctly exposing that's enough of being a serious but i wanted to keep the aperture as wide as possible in each scene because i like the i've overexposed holes here. They kind of remind me of a film called The Village. Now if you've seen The Village you'll know what I mean. It's uh, one of my favourite films. It's made by M. Night Shyamalan because if you're into any kind of photography and direction and art you will appreciate and understand that every shot looks just perfect. Every shot is like a piece of art, a picture. So being in the woods obviously always makes me think of that film. There's something about it it's not a horror film.
it has just started to rain a little bit and neither the GTN or the Fuji XS10 is weatherproof. Okay, now it's uh, starting to actually rain properly now. I'm gonna have to put this in the bag because I don't wanna fucking ruin it. It's actually, oh shit. <laughs> Yep, yeah, it's proper pouring down. I'm actually going to uh, just wait a second while I'm under this tree um, in case the rain gives me just a chance to just go over there. Um, here's like an ancient um, hill fort. Um, so it's got loads of rocks. I wanna get over there and I wanna take a shot at least in that open area there. Um, before I, before I, uh, what the fuck was that? Oh, that's a good shot, huh? So as you can see, I was cut short on my trip to the woods because of the rain. So I'd only taken about 19 shots at that point. So the other day I went out, shot the rest of the Loma Crow Metropolis at Clevedon and Portishead Beach in the broad daylight, still set at 400 ISO. So all these shots um, were starting to get blown out, but at least with film, you can recover some of that. So what I noticed with this film is exactly what I expected. Loma Crow Metropolis is usually for like urban street photography uh, where you have a desaturated look. Especially if it's not sunny, you're gonna get a really bland look. What I was impressed with, this film being shot in the woods, is that the greens and the browns have a really nice subtle look to them. What it's done well here is it's muted that green really nicely. That brown undertones that you can see, I really like. Again, the colors are very desaturated, but I quite like the look that this has come out with. It's quite a little bit washed out. Obviously they were overexposed as well. Luckily with film, it's not too much of a problem because you can recover it. It's when you're underexposing where you've got a problem with all the noise and the shadows. The first thing I actually shot on this camera was a few months back and it was Cinestill 800T. So me and my photographer buddy, David, went out one warm evening to shoot with Sinister 800T. And here are the results.
Next we moved on to a location that had an abandoned caravan that we thought might be interesting to take some shots of. Hopefully no one gets fingered. <laughs> <laughs> Abandoned. How are you feeling about going in there? Well, it doesn't say. It just says don't obstruct. Which is what we're doing yeah. now. Ah! Oh, if I get fucking tetanus here <laughs> from taking pictures, it's not how I'm going out. The sun was setting and it was a quick dash to get to a better spot. We were a little too late, but we got some blue hour photos instead. If you're looking for a Leica, but you don't like the look of the price tag that comes with it, find yourself one of these. You won't be disappointed. The lens is absolutely amazing. Will you miss focus sometimes? Yeah. It's manual at the end of the day. It's harder to focus. You probably take a little bit longer than you would on an SLR due to the, the way that you focus on a rangefinder. The focus ring is right up next to the camera body instead of it kind of naturally you'd, you'd want to be here your fingers are getting in the way of each other as you're holding the camera that is a little bit annoying but all in all in overall conclusion i love this camera i love being out with this camera could i be any more cool well yeah with a leica but <laughs> well that's it thank you for watching if indeed you are still watching and I'll see you next time, I will take some more pointless fucking pictures. Goodbye. We done? Yes.